Extrusion in 3D modeling is the process of creating new geometry. Today, we get to learn the Extrude tool. Let's begin. All right, here we are back inside of Maya again. And before we learn this Extrude tool, I want to show you how I set up my project when I start for the first time. And you can save your Maya um, project wherever you like as a file, but I prefer to do it this way, so I'll show you how it's done. Go up to File, and then go down where it says Project Window, and click on that one. And Maya allows you to create a project folder with a bunch of subfolders that it uses, which is very useful. So click on the New button, and then you just need to name your project. So I'm going to call it Intro to Maya Simple Room. And then I just need to sh um, choose where I want to save it. So I'm going to click on this folder here, navigate to my desktop where my Maya folder is. And here I'm going to select this folder. And then here you can actually change the names of the subfolders, but I'll leave that at default and then click accept. Now what Maya has done is, I'm going to open up the folder. Maya's created this project folder and in it are a bunch of subfolders. And here you have a scenes folder, you have some source images, and the Maya will use these to locate um, for specific tasks. So very useful. I'm going to close this window and then here, I can save my project now. I can um, hit Control S, which is the hotkey, or you can go up to here and just save your scene. I'm going to Control S to save. And as you can see, Maya knows to save the, the scene in the Scenes folder. And here, I'll name my scene, which is Simple Room. Hit Enter. And now Maya has saved our scene for us. And this is just another way to um, save your project. So. Um, try this out, I think it's very useful, and now we're ready to move on. Now let's look at the Extrude tool. So I'm going to create an object again, and I'm going to use um, the Poly Modeling Shelf. Going up here, clicking on the cube, and Maya will place a cube in the scene for us. So when you extrude, you're just creating new geometry on top of the geometry you have. And you can extrude faces, edges, even vertices, or the entire object. Let's open up the modeling toolkit because um, that has some fast um, access to some of the popular tools that we use. Over here, you have your extrude button. And you can also get to extrude by going up here to Edit Mesh, Extrude. The hotkey is Control e and then how I like to get at it is uh, if you have your object selected and your mouse is over your object, hold down the shift key, hold down the right mouse button, and you get to extrude this way as well. So for now, I'll use this extrude button. So let's select a face. We're going to go into our face component mode. I'm going to do it by using the marking menu. So holding down the right mouse button, dragging to face and then I can select a face. And then all we need to do is press the Extrude button. Maya will give you um, a manipulator tool as well as the Extrude tool window. And then we just need to drag this and we've added new geometry on top of the geometry we already had. And it's, it's as simple as that. Um, you can also extrude by using these um, options here. So I'm just going to control Z to go back. If I drag with my left mouse button on these, I can extrude this way as well. And I can also um, change the offset. So the offset is this. I'm going to control Z a couple times. If this is too strong, one of the things you can do is hold down your control key on your keyboard and then drag with your left mouse button and that will ease up on the strength of that a little bit. If you want even finer controls, hold down the control plus the shift key 
and then drag and that's even more fine and there's one more global control and it's this one up here if i were to reduce that pie to like say maybe one piece so left clicking on that um, to change the pie pieces now if i drag with my left mouse button you'll see that it's not as intense so that's an option for you there if you want to change it up there now you can also extrude multiple pieces and we'll get more into extrusion from just making props but i just want to show you if i left click this face and i hold down shift and select this one as well i can press this extrude button now when i drag out it'll, it'll extrude both of these faces so that's very useful and one other thing i want to cover for extrusion is you can um, accidentally extrude and forget about it so for example if i select this face and i hit the extrude button i choose to extrude but i change my mind i hit Control z maya has actually already made that extrusion you just haven't extended it yet so be careful with that because this is still here so if i click off it and i maybe move this face right and later on i actually have this piece of geometry still here so for example if i try and move it you can see that um oops i had that extra face selected right i'm just gonna um, unselect it for a second so i'm gonna select this one move that up it's still there so just be careful that um when you extrude that you if you change your mind you press Control z a couple of times to be sure so first i'm going to fix this one um this is um more advanced so later on but um to fix that if you've accidentally extrude you just need to re-weld these vertices so i'm gonna select these vertexes so here and you'll notice actually because if you highlight this right it shows that there's two verts there so I just need to merge those again. So I'm going to select all those verts. I'm going to um, hold down shift, right click, drag up to vertices, and merge. You don't have to worry about that right now, but that's just to um, fix that. So um, just to be sure, right? So I'm going to go into face mode. When you select a face and you extrude, and if you change your mind and you control Z, right? Just double check that you've control Z'd enough time. So or un, un, undone it enough time. So I'm gonna control Z to undo, and I'm gonna control, control Z again, and my windows disappeared. And then if I try and move this face, right, the extrusion is gone. Yeah, so that's all I want to say about that. Let's make our first object, which will be the floor and the walls. And I'm gonna delete this object, and then we'll start. Going up here to the poly modeling tab, I'm gonna add a plane. And I'm gonna go back to our channel box, right? Um, and the plane comes with, I'm pressing F to frame in on it. The plane comes with all these subdivisions. I don't really need them. So I can change it by opening up this input here. More on that later, but you can change it right here. Or I can press T to open up the um, tool window for this plane and I can change it here so I can just drag these my pie, my pie piece is too small so it's, it's not dragging fast enough for me I'm going to change it to two pieces drag it here drag it here and now I have a single piece and then I can change um, the scale of it so maybe I want a 5x5 five five room so I'm going to put 5 in the X for the scale and 5 in the Z hit enter and now we have a plane um, that's five by five units. Okay, so now let's try and extrude some edges. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to select the edge. So I'm going into the edge component mode and then I'm gonna use the box selection. So dragging here, it's gonna select those two edges, right? And let's open up our modeling toolkit again and press the extrude button, right? And now we can extrude. So I want the um, edges to go this way because I want my walls to have some thickness for when I extrude them up, which you'll see in a second. But if I change the thickness or the local translate, you'll see that it's going in that direction. right? I don't want that. I'm going to change the offset. 
and I'm going to leave that as is for there. And then now I want to extrude this whole face to give it thickness. So to do that, we can go back into um, object selection for a second. And I can select all the faces. Or in this case, since it's just really a plane, a one giant face, I can select the object, press the extrude, and I can drag the selection arrow up. And now my floor has some thickness. Or I can choose to have thickness. I'm going to control Z. And I'll change the thickness, right? So drag that. And now it has some thickness, right? Gonna make it a little bit thicker than I want on purpose. Um, but there it is right there. And yeah, we can just click off it. And now our floor has some thickness. Now let's finish our room by creating the walls, right? So I'm gonna select this face. I'm still in face selection, so that's why it's giving me that option. Um, so I'm gonna select this face, hold down the shift key, hover over this face, and left click to select that face. Now I have these two faces selected, and every once in a while I'll rotate my mesh just because I wanna make sure that I don't have other faces selected. I'm gonna press the extrude key, or the extrude button again, and I'm gonna um, extrude up. I'm gonna change it on the local translate this time, just to show you guys that you can do it that way as well. And I'm gonna go up maybe to here. And there you go. I have a room that has a floor and some walls because in isometric art, um, having some thickness in the floors and walls really gives it some form and believability. Um, and it makes it look like a miniature model, which is makes it look fun. Now let's open up our channel box. I'm gonna click off our object. I'm gonna go back into object selection mode. So I'm holding down the right mouse button, dragging to here, selecting my object. And what you'll notice is we have some inputs now. So this is what I wanna cover. Say you wanted, um, you made this and you change your mind. You want the floor to not be as thick. You can actually go back and change it in some of these options, Options, I should say. So our second extrude was here. I can go into there, scroll down to what I changed, which was, which was the thickness. And maybe I wanna change this to say 0 0.05. Hit enter, right? And now our floor, um, we've modified it. So Maya remembers the construction history. Same with the walls. So. I can click on my object again to bring this back up. And I can, at the very top is your most recent one, and that's when we raised the height, right? So I can click on that. And we moved it 2.4, but maybe I want it to be um, three units high. So I can go to what I changed, which was the local translate Z. Press enter. And now our floor and our walls have, um, um, we were able to modify it. Uh, and I want to show you one more thing, how it relates to the attribute editor, because I think this is important as well, because the attribute editor gives you other options as well. I'm going to click on our object, and I'm going to tear off our channel box for a second. So I'm going to drag it off, so just so you can see you can modify it, right? And then what I can do is just make this a little bit smaller for now, and I can pin it to here. And you, that's how you tear off panels and adjust it. And I'm just gonna open up our, ch our attribute editor again. And if you look over here, this is how it relates to it. Um, these inputs here are related to uh, the inputs in the um, attribute editor. And you can get some up here by just using these arrows or using the mouse wheel to cycle across them. And, and you can see that it has um, options that are very similar to here. So if I choose um, poly extrude phase two. These ones here reflect here, but you have um, some other options here as well. So I'm just gonna um, maybe drag this. So if you have this problem like I do, sometimes when you try and repin it, it gives you um, trouble. I have to minimize Maya, drag this off, and then repin it this way. So I'll drag this back to here, and then I can re-expand it and I'll just drag my channel back box back up to the top, and there you go.
And then I want to talk about the construction history. So Maya allows you to modify it um, to a certain point. Um, and when you're done, you want to actually delete this history because as your objects accumulate um, history, Maya will slow down and you'll notice that uh, your scene will take longer to update and the program starts lagging. So when you're done with um, making the changes you want, you'll want to delete this history and you can do that by going up to here, edit, um, delete history, or what I like to do is just use this button up here, delete history. So when you delete the history, this is now gone. And if you look in your attribute editor, it's also gone from there as well. And then finally, what, what I want to cover from this channel box is the layer system. So we can actually put this object on its own layer and we can um, view it that way as well. It makes it very convenient. So select your object and down here where you have the, these, um, this layer panel, the first two icons are to move the layers up and down if you have multiple layers. We don't have any layers yet, so it doesn't apply to us. The third icon is to create a layer. And the fourth one is to put the current object you have selected on its own layer. So let's click that one. Now we have our object. We have a new layer that the object is part of. Let's double click the layer and we can name it. So I'm going to name this to the room layer. Um, hit enter, hit save. And now this object is on its own layer. And I'll explain how this layer works. Um, in the far left icon here, you see a V. And if you click that, that's the visibility of your layer. The next one is a P. And that refers to whether the layer is visible in playback mode. It doesn't apply to us. You can leave that alone. The final one is um, um, T, which stands for templated. So you, it's like wireframe, except that you can't click on any, anything. So that's very useful as well. R stands for reference. So it means you're, um, you can see it in shaded mode, but also you won't be able to click it. And then finally, the last one's just normal. You can click on the layer again, move it and adjust it and work with your object. Um, for now, we'll turn it to reference. And that's all that I want to cover with layers. And yeah, so hopefully that was um, understandable for you guys. We're gonna start modeling and making objects soon. And now we have um, a floor and walls to kind of see what's happening. And the final thing for today is we want to save our progress. So let's go up to File, Save Scene, or the hotkey is Control S to save your scene. And that wraps things up for today. In the next part, we are going to start blocking out our scene. See you then.